Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Communication of Success, a channel dedicated to helping you communicate your success in the workplace. I am Mishkant. I am your educator, communicator, and I'm here to give you a couple of tips on how to communicate with the management of your workplace. I know you are saying, I want to stay up as far as I can from them, which can be a good thing. However, it doesn't mean that they are not going to come and find you. So which one do you prefer? Do you prefer to hide until they come and find you or you want to be prepared? If you want to be prepared, then keep watching. So what are the couple of things that you can keep an eye on when you communicate with your supervisor, manager? Let's start with why do you want to communicate with your supervisor? First of all, because at some point in your career, you are going to be a supervisor as well. So use that as a learning curve. Second, your supervisor can promote you. He, she will evaluate your work by the end of the day. A supervisor will recommend you to other workplaces if you decided to apply somewhere else. So it is in your best interest to keep a good working relationship with your supervisor. You need tools, definitely. And I'm here to give you these tools. Tool number one, understand your supervisor communication style. So is the supervisor extrovert? Is he introvert? Does she prefer email or in person? How they would like to communicate job related tasks. It's very important to understand that bit. Why? An introvert supervisor will not like it if you show up at their door and telling them, hey boss, I need X, Y, Z. Hey boss, what do you think of X, Y, Z? They would feel ambushed. They would feel that you interrupted the flow of their workplace and they will not take it well. An introvert supervisor, a couple of tips on dealing with him or her. They would definitely prefer an email. Give them a heads up about the topic that you want to discuss with them. If they prefer to email you back, then that's how it's going to be. And if you want to set a time, give them time. Let's say the meeting will take 30, 50 minutes of their time. And what are you going to joke about exactly? So keep that in mind. On the other hand, the extrovert supervisor, he, she would tend to talk. So you have to be a good listener. So you listen to them, you make sure that you get the bottom line. So maybe they would like to share a story first, maybe they would like to uh, kind of give you anecdote about their experience. Keep all that in mind. Many employees here would think that the supervisor is actually wasting their time. He, she is not. They are communicate according to their style. So here is the bottom line. You as an employee, you have to cater to the communication style of the supervisor, not the other way around. The other thing that we need to understand, the work style of the supervisor. So oftentimes, you know, task-oriented supervisors, they will come and tell you, where is the report that I gave you yesterday? Did you complete it? Probably they will not greet you. Probably they will not ask you, uh, you know, about your family members or uh, how was your weekend. They will get to the point immediately. And I'm a task-oriented person. So, uh, you know, I came all the way to this meeting not to be given the history or the background about the project. I wanted the bottom line. So I, you know, interrupted the presenter and told him, I know that, but get to the point. You see, to me, to a task-oriented person, I wanted the bottom line. 
I did not want background history or the data because I knew all of that. And I came to the meeting with the expectation that they will give me the bottom line. Keep that in mind if you are dealing with a task-oriented person. Now, on the other hand, if you are dealing with a supervisor who wants to build a rapport with you, so he, she will come and greet you. They will ask you, how is your family doing? Check and see if there's anything going on with you. How was your weekend? Things to that effect. However, by the end of the day, they still won't work. So it's very important to keep that in mind. It doesn't mean if you know the supervisor is building a relationship, a professional relationship with you, that he, she's going to you know, lets you slide. In fact, the supervisor will feel personally disappointed if they invested in you and you did not deliver. In other words, you let them down after they invested in you. So how to deal with such a supervisor? Be ahead of the curve. Hey, supervisor, how was your weekend? I read this article about the topic we discussed yesterday. And here are a couple of things that uh, I found out. What do you think? Should we implement them in our next project? I attended a presentation. I participated in a conference. So use their style to show them that you are actually working. You have to keep that in mind. You have to deliver. And again, you always have to cater to their work style not the other way around. The other thing that usually happens in, in this area, people tend to be judgy. So for example, an employee would say, if I were the supervisor, I would not have that goal or task. Honestly, it's not your job to judge. It's your job to understand, to cater to their learning style. Why? Because they're the supervisor and they can call the shots. So keep these in, things in mind when you are working with them. The other thing that you have to keep in mind, how does your supervisor want you to complete the task? So do they want you to complete the task collaboratively? You will work with them or they want you to do it independently and then they are going to check your work. So in terms of working collaboratively with the supervisor, you have always to remember that he, she is still a supervisor. What does that mean for you? If you have an idea and you make, you are 100% sure that this idea works, present it as a suggestion. Don't boss your boss around. You see what I'm saying? Oftentimes, if you work shoulder to shoulder with the supervisor, you tend to perceive him or her as your partner, your buddy. It's really not the case. He, she is still a supervisor. And you have to maintain that professional relationship with him or her. So present your ideas as suggestion and see how they like it or not. Keep in mind, if the supervisor did not like working with you, that will mean something. It will reflect on your evaluation, maybe the next promotion will pass you by. So we don't want all these things to happen. The other thing uh, about uh, this part, you have to do most of the work, if not all the work. You know, it's true. The supervisor likes working with you or likes working collaboratively. Nevertheless, Remember that he, she has many projects on their plate. There's a lot of things that they do. You, on the other hand, has this project. Even if you have many projects, still remember that he, she is the supervisor. You are the employee. So you will do the majority of the work and don't expect that they do half and half or, you know, they do most of it. If they end up doing most of it, they will not task you again. True, you may not want to be tasked again, but it's going to reflect negatively on your evaluation or on your promotion, your bonus. 
It means basically you failed to be a good partner to them, something you don't want. Now, uh, the challenge here, if the supervisor wants you to complete the task independently, so you do everything on your own, and then he, she will check it. Now, the challenge here is to figure out, you know, what the boss wants, what is their expectation or his or her expectation in this case. Try to get as much information as you can. If you can get a deadline, if you can get an objective, a goal, um, background information, if they have it, most of the time they will tell you, here is a report, read it and you will know. When you get the report, you will find out that it's 100 page. Still, you know, it's your task, it's your job. Let's say you couldn't get any information out of them. So what will you do? Keep the organization, mission and vision in mind. So the overall culture of the organization, the overall mission, what they try to achieve. You can also look around and see what other employees have done. Uh, be discreet when you ask, because most supervisors, they will not like it if you, for example, say that the supervisor tasked me and gave me nothing to work with. But try to make it as lesson learned you know, I heard about this project that you implemented. Are there any lessons learned you would like to share with me? This will show that you are seeking growth. It's not like you are imposing on other colleagues in the name of your supervisor. Now, if you want to make it more challenging, definitely the uh, virtual environment make it more challenging. So how are you going to uh, communicate with your boss if you don't see them or rarely see them. Still, it is your job to communicate with them. So how are you going to do this? First of all, make sure to uh, communicate with them by email, by phone, again, depending on their uh, communication style and keep them informed. So you can send an email in the morning saying I'm on the job, that's absolutely fine. It doesn't mean that they will not hear from you the entire day. In fact, it is your job to keep them informed and engaged at the same time. So send them another email saying, hey, supervisor, I completed this task. I completed this report. Do you have any feedback? So make the email or the connection meaningful. How do you make it meaningful? When you center it around a product. So what is the product that you are delivering to them? Now, of course, you can communicate you know, via Zoom, via uh, MS Teams, you can still text them, but there is a fine line between imposing yourself and communicating. If you keep sending your supervisors uh, email that are not really meaningful or text them in a way that is burdening their time and effort, of course they are not going to like. Again, you have to make sure to create a balance between communicating with them and imposing on their time. Best communications are the ones that involve, you know, either a product or a suggestion, a step forward, how are we going to do this, or a lesson learned. So these are some tips for you if you want to communicate virtually. There are a couple of things also that you need to stay away from. Don't wait until the supervisor calls you on Zoom or Team or you know, phone, and they cannot find you. If you need to step away from your virtual office, give them a heads up. You can simply say, I'm taking a late lunch because I worked on this and that, or I'm going to go for a coffee break from this time to this time. Make sure when you come back to tell them that I'm back. They may not reply, but still, they are reading your communication. Keep in mind, the virtual environment is challenging to them.
probably more than to you. So they still have to report to someone about how are they managing their employees. So the more you can be collaborative, working with them, you cooperate, you uh, be there, the better it is for you. You know, the other thing is that, let's say your supervisor called you and somehow maybe you were in the bathroom, you, you know, you didn't pay attention, the uh, technology let you down. Make sure to follow up as soon as you can. And to be honest with you, it's preferably that you have a backup device. So if you are communicating on Zoom, for example, download the application on your phone. So if your computer dies, you have your phone. Try to keep the phone handy with you. So if they call you, you can immediately see what's up. Uh, I hope you find these tips helpful to you in your workplace, whether virtually or in person. If so, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel so as you can get the latest update. Share this video with someone who's looking to communicate better with the, their supervisor. And see you in the next video. Thank you.